there. Welcome to another episode of Study Sun Podcast, the only podcast dedicated to astronauts, all while rocking it on all the interdimension space traveling radars to empower creative musicians everywhere. I'm your host, Piedra, and today I'm joined by Mass Hancock. The f- but first, to become part of our interstellar presence, find us at StellarSoundPodcast.com on all our social media platforms at StellarSound Podcast or join our astronauts in the Stellar Sound Community Discord server. Links are in the description. So today we see Matt Hancock and they're an experimental music project, a collaboration between our two guests here. So Guada is from Lithuania, currently based in UK, and Maya from Hungary, who's currently in Australia. So I have all come. How are you feeling today? Great, thank you. Yeah, good. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, we're very How happy you? to have navigated the time zone. <laughs> yes. I'm, yes. Oh yeah, that that was also quite difficult, I guess. <laughs> what what is yes. the difference between you two? I think it should be like ten, eleven hours. No, at the moment it's eleven hours exactly. Oh yeah, that's that's quite tough. <laughs> um, yeah, but maybe going to your project. So let's start from the beginning. I know that you two met in the UK and started playing together around two years later, right? Uh, so. So, what yeah. was your first meeting like how did you meet and also when did you decide and how did you decide to play together um so we met mm-hmm. met um at university on our bachelor's course um Guada was well just incredible basically i think like everyone was very 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 impressed by just what she was like as a person she was designing her own instruments and building these really cool things and and um you know i've always wanted to work with her from then on i think yeah so yeah and then in so so yeah we in 2016 we decided to start my shangok i think yeah no not 2016 no 2016 sorry okay. yes uh it was like a late 2016 um and it was mm-hmm. after because while being in university i got a chance to go to japan uh, for an exchange for six months so when i got there i got the chance to do a this instrument that is like a, a combination of shamisen and cello uh and then i managed to, to carve it and then send it to uk through lithuania it was the whole journey for the instrument itself uh and then so yeah and then once it reached UK, I wanted to do something more of it, like perform with it. And I always loved Maya's vocals. And then I thought, I, I said, maybe we should do something together. So we, so Mesh Angok started yeah, in uni for our first concert was actually for, we had like this chorus uh, sort of concert thing, like kind of a co- chorus gig. So it was our, our first improvised gig and Mesh Angok actually started as improvisation uh, based collective mm. uh, and then we did that for like a couple of years that was like like we didn't do any recordings at all and it was just me with the instrument and my with vocals very like basic setup uh but yeah it was working for a while uh while we were just doing live stuff and it was fun yes <laughs> so that's how yeah. like the the start of it yeah like that yeah, so worked pretty might- well while we were in the same space and then we kind of had, had to start recording yeah. things when we moved <laughs> further away from it's... each other because we were like oh wait you can't play together if you're not together <laughs> yeah. yeah that yeah that does make sense actually i did have one of the questions like why did you decide to finally record some of your music because i knew that you didn't play like you didn't record anything for a few years so yeah. i guess that was when corona started then right yeah so Basically, yeah. So, because I moved to Glasgow, and then you, you were, Maya were living, you were living in uh, Brighton at the time. Brighton, so it was yeah. very difficult for us to do anything together. Mm-hmm. And when COVID started, we couldn't even meet up. So the first EP, Chaos, in t- in two thousand actually two thousand twenty. Sorry, not two thousand. I was five, but in two thousand twenty. <laughs> <laughs> when we were 10. <laughs> yes. That we're would gonna... be very impressive. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so yeah, in 2020, <laughs> our first EP. So yeah, we 
uh, we recorded majority of it uh, from like our bedroom. So I don't know, like in so I did my part here, and then you did your part in in in, in Brighton, and we just had tried to put it together all in in the computer for the first time, and it was I think mm-hmm. very big shift for us because it completely changed how we make music and how work like together. actually our sound as well and how we work together as well yeah. very much so. yeah maybe how did you navigate through that because i can imagine that like since you especially since you improvised a lot so it's much more difficult to do something like that um online how did you how did you start or how did you think that hmm, maybe we should do this online maybe we should kind of start sending recordings to each other um to to make it work in a way, or we kind of improvised the process of it. We were kind of coming up with it as we went, didn't we? Like, instead of improvising whilst making music, we were improvising how to make music <laughs> distantly. But we tried yeah. to like, come up with song structures and then pass them back and forth mm. to each other. Um, mm. But also, yeah. it's, I think oftentimes it ended up being Guada actually also a lot of the time fixing things that I did because... I, my world went less into music production than hers, so her skill set is just like so high that oftentimes mm-hmm. it was like her doing a lot of extra work on the things that I'd be coming up with as well. So I think she really deserves like a lot of credit there. <laughs> um. Thank you. But yeah, it's also, I mean, I think for both of us, especially with the first EP when we had to do everything in like from distance and I think we couldn't actually meet up, which was also quite sad because obviously we all lived through COVID and it was a difficult time. Uh, and I think we haven't actually, it was like a time before our first EP, it was that we had like a couple of years, I think even break because I did my masters and you were uh, doing your stuff mine and it was kind of a few years break. And I think when COVID hit, it was kind of everything stopped and it was like, we were like, oh, maybe we should do music together again somehow and try to find a way back. Uh, and then I think it was kind of going from there, trying to like, oh, look, I made like this little track, maybe try to put some mo- mo- like vocals or stuff on in, on it and then you will do your thing and then pass it to me and then I'll do my thing. And then fewer, like, fewer, few, fewer songs were not very great. Few were like, Actually, it got better with time, I think, because before our first EP, we did like three songs before do- doing actual piece of work. Uh, mm-hmm. And then I think it was sort of like slightly getting better. We slightly kind of got like a hang of how this could work. But it was very experimental being like, oh, I just like did this. And then you being like, oh, I just did this. And then we like, yeah. <laughs> so we just like kind of <laughs> combining everything, like trying to see what fits and what doesn't really like what the, what does stick, what doesn't stick. Uh, but mm-hmm. yeah, it was. I think also very big change was that for me it was because I always used that one instrument, and out of the sudden it was because in obviously in the in the box in the computer there's like a whole world of any possible sound basically. So it shifted a lot from. A lot further from because we started from very like pure sound that not really affected like vocals quite pure on the stage uh, just a bit of reverb uh, the instrument also just a bit of a delay very simple setup and with our recording music it suddenly became like like what genre are we doing because it's like we're now kind of electronic music and then but we used to be like this very like nothing to do with electronic music and it sort of uh yeah it sort of changed a lot in that sense as well because it just mm-hmm. the medium changed so much that it completely changed our sound and how and, and the sound as well so yeah it would be interesting to see how we would perform live now after working from different cities for so long because it would just also be completely different setup because I don't think we could go back to improvising as we did because that, that's not really what Mesh yeah. Hangout is about anymore. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, it was kind of, I think it was just sort of with the Mesh Hangout itself, like this project I think really reflects how through years we 
like even though living in different cities, we try to find ways to just work together, uh, even though mm-hmm. it's kind of like, and then the sound sort of changed according to the our lives, basically, where mm. where we're going and, and, and how. I think, I don't know, maybe you don't agree with me, Mai, I don't know. No, <laughs> but, I super agree. Yeah. I think it's like a little history or a diary or a friendship. It's really nice having like the opportunity to yeah. just actually listen to the evolution of our friendship through our music. It's like... So yeah, but you know, you mentioned how you went from kind of more like pure sound to kind of electronic music. Have you ever tried um, like describing what you to describe to kind of put your music into one genre, or was it always like you know we're just doing what we're feeling and that's it basically? It was more of a feeling, I think, <laughs> for me at mm-hmm. least. Uh, uh, I don't know. What do you think, Maya? Yeah, no, I agree. I think like we've we've had to kind of come up with genres to you know in a way when you're when you're writing things or when you're writing I don't know funding applications and stuff like they they ask for your genre. So we've we've had to come up with it, but it's always been after we've already been making the music. We just go and listen to the music and be like, what is this? <laughs> so it hasn't been there. <laughs> And then obviously we started out, I guess, on like more of like the folky, folky side of things, like more of a world music, very natural sounds, into more of an ambient electronic, maybe slightly lo-fi, but still with a bit of folk. I don't like it's it's always one of those yeah. things where you kind of have to come up with the description or the category after the music already made. It wasn't that we decided that we were going to go towards a certain genre. We're like, we're going for this sound. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think interestingly that our, like in the beginning, our like improvisational stuff was quite, like it was very out there and it was a, maybe less even musical than what we did with our latest TP, for example, like a lot less music, like it's musical, but it's like, it's very kind of experimental, but then we could fit quite well into like a genre of experimental music of like experimental Mm -hmm. folk improvisation. It was kind of clear, but I think when we started working, uh, like this, like in the computer, with the computer and like going more electronic, uh, towards the electronic side of it. I think it became kind of less and less clear of what genre it is. And I think, yeah, for us, it definitely was always like a feeling of how, of what we're doing or like, what are we feeling this or are we not feeling this? And I think, yeah, I don't think there is, like, it's always difficult, as you said, Maya, to put like it into the genres and then it kind of tries, like if you even put upload music to Spotify, it's just like, oh, what genre this is and what kind of, like, we will put you in a certain box or, uh, or like, I don't know, interviews and stuff. I don't know, like applications. It's always kind of like what box you are in. And we are always like, oh, we're just doing each time. We, each time we're just doing anything, just trying things out. But, that, but that's, that's what I love also about this project that we just, try new things and see what sticks and what doesn't and what works and what doesn't work anymore. So it's kind of, uh, and it just sort of evolves, uh, like we said before, with, with the friendship as well. So yeah, it's, in this genre itself also kind of evolves whilst we grow as well. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's, that's very interesting that you kind of develop both your friendship and the project together. And I guess you can also like even kind of map out the journey from the beginning to now and how it changed. And I think it's pretty impressive. Um, But I guess when you started from improvisation, was it from the beginning that decided that you kind of want to improvise live? Because I feel like for a lot of people, especially when they start projects, they might be afraid to go just like completely improvisation just because they're afraid to fail, especially if they haven't played together for a long time. How was we it for you? Young. Were you afraid? That's <laughs> brave. That's great. <laughs> so, young and brave. <laughs> we were young and stupid, I think. That's the We were young and specifically but, dumb. <laughs> yeah. But I think 
yeah, the interesting, no, not 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 yet, yeah, no, I don't think we were very particular now, but I think what actually was happening was for some reason, like we really clicked in like when we had to like play. We like to be honest, we did not rehearse a lot before playing live. We did like a few res like rehearsals and we will be like, yeah, we will do something, we will figure it out. And we always did figure something out. <laughs> and always yeah, kind like of we'd, we'd in time. With 15 minute sets, we'd be like, okay, we're gonna do a 15 minute set, but we've only sat down together to play for half an hour before. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a couple of uh, we will sit down like a couple of days before, like, I mean, like an hour, a, two days before, and an hour a day before, and be like, just mm -hmm. figure out the main, the main thing was always to figure out the setup of what we're using and how to actually we're playing, uh, and just basic sort of, uh, like a key how we're starting things, how we ending things, and then we just sort of, mm -hmm. and I think because music making, I think is a bit more like friendship in the way that you're actually listening to each other and just seeing what others are doing. So I think it was quite natural at that point, just sort of like, oh, I'm listening to what Mai is doing and Mai is listening to what I'm doing. And it kind of felt like it didn't really, it was very obvious. I don't know, I never, it was very obvious of how to play live and improvise. improvise. And I think at least for me, it was very scary actually to start recording and put something like in print because mm -hmm. I, I was not sure anymore how to do that in the same way how to like mm -hmm. listen of in the real time how to listen to what others what what Maya is doing and then how to respond in that way because it was suddenly becoming very imprint very like sort of permanent and then it had to be because I think in life improvisation a lot of like flukes and then a lot of like imperfections are a lot more tolerated and it's uh, I think our live performances are good to listen in while you were in a space but to like actually record and listen to it back it's a bit like okay like it's not really a song it's just like a long improvisation of like things uh, so yeah it's like a conversation uh, like like us like talk. It's, it's like watching an interview on stage but it's unedited, unedited so it's like in person you don't really mind the the ums and the ahs right <laughs> i guess yeah yeah, yeah. so it's a bit, yeah so it was and it's again a bit a lot about the feeling and then just sort of yeah just us having conversations conversation via music so it started like that and it felt actually it felt a lot less scary than actually doing a prepared set because mm -hmm. since now we released a lot of songs like i think this the, the idea of us performing live with those songs scares the excuse my language but scares the shit out of me like it was just like oh my god how like how like there's so many elements now and then you have to be perfect because people come with like this expectation of this particular thing maybe or this and then um yeah so how do we recreate really, it on stage and <laughs> <laughs> it's like and then, but then, like, I don't really want to recreate because, like, I like really like the aspect of like the the, the live improvisation. So it's like very conflicting. Uh, and then, in some way, it's kind of like very not intuitive with us because I think, like, usually musicians most of the time prefer to actually like they record the song, perform it live, not to improvise and. We're just complete opposite. We're just like, please, can we improvise? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no songs, no. <laughs> so yeah, uh, yeah, it's quite odd. Yeah, I, su I suppose it comes from us being at art school together. So we were kind of treating it less as music at the time, but more as like, not we were we were treating it as music, but it didn't come from the music direction. It mm -hmm. came from the semi art school semi music school direction and we worked on mm -hmm. like collaborative projects before together so we were already quite good at knowing how the other person works so it just kind of made him as a natural next like step, mm -hmm. step i guess yeah um yeah i just while we were talking like uh, i thought you know we when you have something recorded it's easier to like send it to someone and be like hey invite us this is what we do how did you find your first uh, places to perform? Like, how did you manage to get people who like invite you to perform? 
or were you the ones who were like, oh, we're very great, you know, can we come in and play at your place? Good question, actually. <laughs> uh, I think we were just very good at talking. I think you were particularly, Maya, good yeah. at talking. You'd be like, we're so good. And everyone would be like, yes. <laughs> Come to think of it, I think I think that's that's how we like. But also, we we ended up getting because our first performance was was um, y- you managed to get a really good recording of it and edited it. So then, after our first one, we already had something that was sure. kind of like, look, this is what it is. I mean, it wasn't like a mm. uh, was you know it was, but it was something to show people to so go like, hey. It wasn't like a studio recording or anything, but it it was it was representative yeah. of what we did because it was kind of what we did. Mm-hmm. And I think for gigs as well, it kind of worked well because it's already a recording of an alive set, so it was sort of like, oh, we would like to play this, and then I think yeah, quite a few of of the gigs after that was just like either saw the recording or the people were actually in the in a space and they were just like oh could you play there so it was a bit yeah so and then also i think every time we were playing somewhere not every time but quite a few times it was like we get like a recording after it like maybe it was like two more mm-hmm. times after so it was very useful mm-hmm. in that sense that we were just we didn't have to do any work basically we didn't have to record we I were know. just gonna go and do live set <laughs> and then we will get the recording being like great let's go <laughs> <laughs> so there's another one uh, so yeah it was i think we were got not got lucky but like sort of got lucky in the way that the first performance was filmed and then it was filmed fairly well so and then so yeah and then we got the chance to get the video edited and use it so i think that was really helpful in a way uh, and because mm-hmm. we, we 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 performed more in like artistic environments at the time rather than like in music scene i think because we both studied sound arts uh and, and our undergrad was sound art and digital music and i think we both at the time were a bit like are we a sound artist or are we a musician <laughs> sort of thing so i think we kind of like walked a bit of a line there uh so we performed a lot in like galleries and sound art events more than actual music venues um mm-hmm. so also i think that's that kinda... where, where all our contacts lied as well we we maybe only knew other people that would, were doing sound art events yeah yeah so i think that also kind of uh was a different public like with anything in 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 the world that we are now with our music i think that would be a bit more difficult to just go with like a improvised set but there's still mm-hmm. uh, venues like that too to do stuff but you know uh yeah it's quite interesting that quite often with like with music you would think like oh they will find the music and then you you can perform but then yeah it's kind of odd because with us sometimes it will be like just we be like in words we'll say we do this and I, i'm not sure even if people always looked at the video we they will be like oh that sounds cool and they will just like <laughs> Come, come over. We'll see. <laughs> um, just yeah. At the beginning, I didn't know if you were more musicians or artists. Have you answered that question now? Like, would you maybe with your second album, would you say that is more like art or is it that more music? Definitely more music. Music. Yeah. yeah. I think we've been uh, like very strongly headed towards the music area. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, well, yeah. So uh, myself personally, I got quite disappointed by the the world of sound arts. <laughs> I don't know. I found it. Uh, oh, no. It was just let's just say I would. It was not for me personally. So I tried to find the way of making things more musical and technical rather than sound art and like concepts and whatever anyway so it's so i think with each of the mashangok albums i think 
and then with you as well, Maya, I think you kind of also slightly started to uh, not like sound art so much after studying it. <laughs> so I think I both think of us it's collectively. In general, of like moved. the art world. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I find the pretentiousness exhausting, to be honest. <laughs> no, yeah, maybe so that's I think a, it's a little bit too honest. <laughs> Sorry. Um. <laughs> pretentiousness of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a bit... Um, yeah, I don't know. It was just kind of like, I think we were... Like it was always the like we were always walked this line that was very difficult to navigate with, especially with our improvisation performances. That we were not a sound art, like we're not out there that much that to be a sound art, uh, and then we were mm -hmm. not musical enough to be in music. So we were something stuck somewhere in between, being like for sound artists we were too musical, and for musicians for like a musical world we were a bit like too out there, like what are, like what's going on here. Uh, so I think we just had to like at certain point, especially with the recorded music, we had to like make the choice finally of like which direction we're leaping uh, towards mm -hmm. with a little more. Uh, so yeah, it just sort of we decided to go music way just because I didn't like I didn't see where we could go with the sound art one, and I didn't like I don't know it I did, it did it did felt it didn't felt right for me at least, and then yeah, and then we just. I think we just decided to go a bit. I think in the, even we didn't really decide it. I think we just sort of. It was went. quite natural. It was we both felt mm. that it was more comfortable, not more comfortable, more exciting and more inspiring to go like in the music way because it was like, oh, there's so much to learn here, and there's so much uh -huh. information, and there's so much like actual, like I don't know, like get more stuff developed in in a specific way, um, rather than more concepts to come up with. I think we got less concept heavy, if that makes sense. And, or maybe like, mm -hmm. you know, they were different in the concept way, like the concept would be there, but it wouldn't be like everything, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we will still have like, a, like our, both of our EPs, and they were still quite, not conceptual, but they had some sort of concept, but, like yeah, mm -hmm. so but but the whole idea of everything was not like a concept it's, itself. We would usually think of what we wanted to say after we did it. <laughs> so <laughs> and we're like, oh, that's the that's the unifying that's the unifying thing. <laughs> so, where in sound art we would be like a bit more yeah, just like this will be silent album and we'll be like just five minutes of silence anyway but yeah <laughs> um so yeah we definitely moved towards more of music side of things and yeah i think it was a good it was a good choice or a good mm -hmm. not yeah, a choice but I think it, so. it, yeah you get the inspiration i guess from folk music you mentioned quite a lot um you also mentioned one other artist is there anything else that inspires you? Maybe also like other musicians or certain styles or maybe even like other for forms of art or could be anything. My brain went completely blank and then all I could come up with was nature, nature inspired me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, my true self. That is also. Like, I like leaves. <laughs> That's great. If it works, it works, right? Yeah. yeah, to be honest, yeah. To be honest, I think nature actually played quite. Because we both really like nature. Uh, mm -hmm. Maya more openly. I'm more reserved in, in my love. <laughs> to plants, but still very much present there. Um, but yeah, I think. I'm not sure how it necessarily tr it translates to the music, but somehow it does. Uh, but in, in terms of musical uh, influences, I think we had like before each uh, EP or each song, for each song we had like this playlist in Spotify, we would put up the playlist um, of what kind of direction we maybe want to go. And then it always was mm -hmm. like from Fortet to some sort of weird opposite thing of Fortet. <laughs> so, uh, so it was 
like we got like I mean for different aspects we got like influence from different things so drums and rhythms and a bit like of like overall flow we I think we really liked of the fortet and it was quite a bit of mm. Sunlux like the ambient ambient flow of uh, Sunlux the how Seb Deliza is playing with uh, lyrics and like, like with uh, I think she's from what Syria. Uh, so she's she uh, like oh, from Iran. Yeah. She, she from she's from yeah, Iran. Iran. Yeah. So is that Iranian language or is it Ira- Iranian. sorry um, Iranian? Iranian. Yes. <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Iranian language. So she how she like plays with traditional music and oh, I don't, like I sort don't of know contemporary. Well, with, with the Iran folk music. That's that's. Oh yeah, we love somebody. So, so, yes. <laughs> so that's I think so yeah, and then the kind of folk music, so Indra Yugelevich as well kind of like was a lot in the mix and then Agnes Obel as well, which is not even an electronic artist, but how she wrote lyrics and her voice vocals and stuff. Uh I think there was a lot of like combination of like folk music and like the li- li- how the lyrics are written and how they are used and then like the production side of things of how we like it to sit and then it and we will listen to the playlist and come up with something completely different like not different okay, but like yeah. nothing would remind of those things <laughs> so because it's just like a combination of such a different. Yeah, kind of like a cocktail mm-hmm. of music that it kind of became, like with all of those influences, we kind of be- made it our own thing. Um, so yeah, there was like quite a lot of musicians that we were really interested in and still are, we still are, and I think we took a lot of influence from them. Um, yeah, so, I'm yeah. starting to think we should maybe put those know. playlists up somewhere because they, they were actually quite interesting in context. Yeah, yeah, true. Um, Definitely could, yeah. Just that would be interesting, I think, to hear just like to see where your music comes comes from in a way. Like, you know, how mm-hmm. how did you come up with the with the sound that you came up with? Yeah. So yeah, with nature stuff, I think it was not a, not as poetic. We didn't really like go in nature and create all the stuff, but I think it just sort of because when we would record music. Uh, doesn't matter like if it's in Glasgow in Brighton uh like after because like our first EP was fully from like a different cities uh except one song and then but our second EP that our latest EP it was we recorded it in half of it recorded in Brighton and half of it recorded in Glasgow and then we would go for walks as like for breaks and then we will get out of like nature and just sort of like uh, just recharge ourselves in that way. So I think nature played uh-huh. like not in a very literal part of being like, oh, well, the song is about this tree or anything like that. But like it kind of <laughs> played a very vital part of us recharging and sort of uh-huh. taking a break and thinking of what actually we did uh, and just sort of, yeah, just recharge basically. I think that's also quite important to note that. It actually that did influence us in some way, I think. Anyway. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> and I think our, our second EP was, was in general like it was it also felt like the whole writing process felt better for that. Like we were already kind of on a journey of just like having a bit more balance even with the writing process and with, with working on stuff and just um I think you can or at least maybe I don't know if it's a personal relation to the process or if you can actually hear it in the difference but I'd be interested to hear that because I think it was it was definitely a certain amount of growth from our first DP to the second one and that as well. Mm-hmm. So since you already started talking about like about your second AP, um, so the first one you recorded kind of completely online from different cities but the second one you're already working together. Uh, maybe how did it feel to actually be come back from working separately to playing together? Good. 
<laughs> no, genuinely, it was it was a very big. Like I think I think it it, it felt like you know when you um, take a when you don't see a friend for a very long time and then if you feel like you just picked up the conversation mm-hmm. at the same place where you left off, like where it's just like no, nothing happened, no, like no. I don't think there was any struggle with coming back, other than I think we did procrastinate playing for a bit because we just had too much other things to catch up with. Um, <laughs> like, um, mm-hmm. but other than that, it was, I think, I found, I personally found it very easy. I don't know how it was for you, Gordon. Yeah, I think it was kind of interesting that we, when we like, we meet, when we meet up, we actually sort of got back to the way we did it from the, like, from the, like, uh, like we did it with the first performance and stuff. Because all of the songs in the in in the EP in the Contemporary Man was made that we actually sat down and we just sort of like put like a ticking track or like a, a bit of a beat and then we just improvised for like what ten minutes and then you would sing something I would play at that point I would play guitar I think for Contemporary Man I didn't mm-hmm. use yeah. instrument as more like the Japanese instrument as my main one uh, and then we would just sort of see what kind of and then we will just take parts of it and then evolve it afterwards in the pro like post processing and then in our own bedrooms after that but the the, the whole core we, we wanted to keep the whole core as we did in a very beginning so just sort of like as i said sit down improvise and then put it into chunks uh and it felt a lot more natural than our because in the first pep it was kind of I felt it was a lot more forced, except from one song, mm-hmm. uh, which was uh, called Eros. We did it, like it was the last song from the Chaos EP, so from our first EP. And how we did it was the same way. So Maya, you came down for, I think it was my birthday. Anyway, but yeah, so you, you managed like to birthday. come down for like, it, it was uh, COVID times, but it was like in between. Uh, and then we... We recorded it 15 minutes before your train because we had like three days, but then we procrastinated because we are we are like that. <laughs> so we we said we had like oh now you have 15 minutes before you have to leave for a train, and we haven't recorded anything. And then we sat down and we recorded it in 10 minutes. Like we haven't played together for years at that point, and we were just like yeah, recording like it 10 years. minutes, and we were like, yeah. And then we sat oh, no, in this room, we, we recorded, yeah. And then we recorded it, and we were just like looked at each other, being like. That's that's good. That's pretty good. And then just went <laughs> off, <laughs> and, and it actually became one of the best songs from that album, I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was kind of. I think it was kind of a sign for us to sort of do that from that point. So I think the whole contemporary man evolved from that one song being like, let's just start each of these songs sitting in this room in the room, and then we'll see where kind of like something will come out of it, like maybe some sort of a vocal lyrical hook maybe some like guitar sound uh and we can always like progress it and change it but into whatever ways we want uh so yeah that was and that was how we started yeah and it was a lot more natural and that less a lot less forced uh so yeah we we still procrastinated a lot but you know it was (laughs) (laughs) a bit less yeah a little, yeah, a little less, and it was, it was fun. So yeah. Yeah, I think it also helps that we, um, for the Brighton section of it, we did a uh, recording in uh, my apartment where we can procrastinate infinite amount. Um, we had we had the studio at the university that we met at. Actually, we, they let us use it for a couple of days, so it was kind of like a nice little full, full circle thing where we were like, oh, mm. we're gonna record in the studio that we used to. <laughs> I don't know, work on group projects yeah. together. <laughs> it was quite fun. Yeah. Actually, it was it was yeah. much easier recording in Gorda's home studio, which we both, well, no, which which Gorda knows really well and I'm very comfortable in. And, and it was actually quite hard recording in a, for a very well-supplied studio um, in comparison. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I think if the... It's quite interesting because when we were in university, it was always felt it always felt like oh, if we only could have like all this equipment and always have like this access to the studios and everything. I mean, we had like access, but like sort of have these studios for ourselves fully. But in reality, like all that, all the gear, 
that sits in the studio there, it just distracts you and it makes it everything so much more difficult because it takes like mm -hmm. a day just to like figure out your way around it. So I think in Brighton it was a lot like, oh, like where, like, where is this, like, how to even like plug in the guitar because of like the mixing desk and how everything is rooted. And it, it was a lot more frustration where in, in my home studio is a lot like, it's very clear, everything goes here, everything goes here, like, and then we can record it and everything is in good quality. Uh, so it was a lot less frustration and a lot less kind of like, because mm. I think we procrastinated a lot in Brighton as well, just because it was like quite difficult to get everything working. And it was a bit of like, it's like that, not saying, but it's sort of this thing with like, if you put a guitar in the case, you will never play it. But if it's always like on the side, like plugged in, you will always kind of practice it. So I think it was a kind of similar mm -hmm. thing. It was just sort of very difficult to to just start doing stuff, even though it's like the really well supplied studio. Uh, so yeah, yeah, we messed uh, about with signal flows for a very long time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and then, yeah, so yeah, we we so yeah, we recorded it in studios and yeah, kind of took it from there. Uh, to be honest, like, the recording process, like, it took one week, four days in Brighton, I think a few days in Glasgow, but then combining everything and then making them into the songs, it took us, like, a few months, obviously, like, kind of dancing around our work schedules and everything, but it was a lot more excuse me, time consuming rather than, I think if we would be in the same space, it would take a lot less time just because mm. uh, I think we kind of bounce off each other a lot more when it's not a computer mm -hmm. screen. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, and Goda, did you use any of your own instruments for, for this Contemporary Man album? Uh, I did use... Uh, the same shamisen and cello hybrid and for uh, in a uh, one pixel well not uh, i forgot the title of the song one pixel on the screen uh yeah one pixel on the screen like one pixel uh so i did use uh shamisen on that one like a bow textures uh thinking what else hmm I think we I will only use that instrument and then just sort of a lot of I think it was a lot of guitar based and then I mean I mm -hmm. did uh I used also a you bass modified. guitar that yeah yeah Sorry. yeah so I did I used a bass guitar that I uh borrowed from a friend and it was broken and I fixed it and modified it with uh these like Soviet uh, capacitors like very old bulky capacitors and then yeah I use that uh, bass in majority of the, of the songs as well uh, but it's not really like uh, and then also you use the modified uh, cassette tape recorder as well that you just sort of varies the speed and samples uh, so sample and resample Maya's vocals as well to sort of give it a bit of a wonky feeling anyway but it was kind of yeah so i did play around with things that i modified or but it was not like the purely something i made from scratch it was i think it was just only uh the sham and it was not not as present as 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 in our beginning but i think it's okay because i think it kind of also evolved through time that we just sort of it still comes back comes back as a texture or but it's not anymore a main element of our compositions because otherwise it would be quite uh Same. yeah that quite i think it will get boring after a while so i think it was kind of good that we kind of just use it as a as a motive from time to time um mm -hmm. didn't you use so yeah, your uh, um your modular synth that you built or what did you, did you build that afterwards I so my timeline is think I haven't used it at that point. Uh, I think I, I was on the process of building it 
at that yeah, time. Yeah, you were. In, unfortunately. In unfortunately. No, I could, I could show my mom. <laughs> no, I, we could lie and say that we use and just show it off. <laughs> Yeah, just off the motor. <laughs> used everything. Everything, yeah, everything that we had. Yeah, we used everything that is in this room. When in reality, we just used a you know a vocal and the guitar. We're like, yeah, <laughs> we, just, we show up on it. No, but yeah, it's no. Yeah, it was actually yeah. I was still building at the time, so uh, yeah. yeah. I think it kind of. Because we went to more of a musical side of things, I think it kind of I part of me that experiments and does like all the weird instruments. It's still very much there, but I think it kind of became a bit more conscious of how I use these things. Like I didn't want to use an instrument just because I made it. Like I didn't want to. Like I, I was mm-hmm. kind of like, oh, if would this make sense? Because uh, I think in a from like an, at the start of the, of the whole of of our journey, I think for me it was a bit like, oh, I want to make it like I will want to use only things that I made, and then be like, ah, oh, like I don't know, just like I made this instrument, and I will just use this instrument now, and then like I made this, like I modified and completely remade the synth, and I want to use just only the synth. Uh, but I think more and more we work together, for me it made more sense to just actually use things that work and then like work mm-hmm. well and how I how I want them to work and what would complement Maya's voice is not to overcrowd things and not to complicate the composition uh, and just for the sake of saying that oh we only use handmade instruments and stuff uh, so I think that kind of yeah that as I said, as I said that part of me is still very much present uh, but it's not as big anymore just because I think we kind of involved uh, evolved more with the mm-hmm. whole project so, yeah. yeah yeah and and Maya for the vocals like uh, in in the first album you used Hungarian language most of the time right uh, mm-hmm. in contemporary man you kind of switch between English and Hungarian but also there's one part um in one pixel on the screen that I really love where you go from like singing very loudly to whispering so you do play quite a bit with both languages and your voice. Um, and I guess I'm just wondering, I was just wondering, like, how does it work for you? How do you kind of make a conscious de- decision to do the switch? Or is it more like, you know, now I'm feeling like I'm, I should sing in Hungarian, but this phrase sounds better in English, so I'm going to do that in English. I think it's, it's, it's in a way, sometimes it's, it's like a certain tune or something will just lend itself better to the other language. Like, even certain techniques or like styles of styles of singing just sound better in the other one. So it's an, often just a playing around in a way, just like trying to figure out which one works best. And then also having kind of the two languages converse with each other in a way. Just like um, it's, I was, I've started to like the concept of of few people understanding the entire song, <laughs> which is. I mean, it's actually not that few people that speak both Hungarian and English. I'm sure there's actually quite a lot, but it's um kind of a little bit of an Easter egg hunt, I guess. But I, yeah, I think I've also started, um, I guess, experimenting more with vocal techniques and 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 mm-hmm. just learning how to use mics better, I suppose, <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> um, I don't know if that answers your question, but yeah, I, I think it's it's more of a, a a process thing. Like I don't sit down and go, okay, it makes I'm going to say these things in Hungarian and these things in English. And um, oftentimes with the writing, I'll just like have some bits and bobs written down in both languages from the previous week, or so I'll just come prepared with like a a little book of of bits and then but none of it will just be like a full strong song structure or be like a full I guess poem lyric um mm-hmm. it'll it'll um you know some of them have been a much more kind of like purposeful kind of rhythmic circle like for example Eros I guess um that was kind of one 
piece that when we recorded it, it was already, it, it was the, the way that I wrote it down when I first thought of it was pretty much the way that we released it. It was just straight up that. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's much rarer than, than um, the way the way that round, especially because when Quarter then starts uh, working with it, she'll often like sometimes we'll record something that, that'll be, you know, five to 10 minutes. And then there'll be sections that take out and then that might need rewriting, for example, because the structure's changed or we feel like, you know, it sounds mm -hmm. better. But, you know, you shorten down a whole um, thing. So there's often like multiple iterations of, of even changing the language from one to the other. There, there's been a song that I've tried to write in both languages and have the translation. And then I think we just went with one of them or it just then sometimes used elements of the other languages translation in it but actually tried to do the whole thing um for mm -hmm. both um yeah it, it changes with every kind of situation which is fun it's it's, it's a lot yeah. to play with i want to learn more languages fluently so there's more to play with a question <laughs> Um, yeah, so maybe like the last question about your Contemporary Man album. Um, which song do you like the most or which part of the song maybe you're most proud of? It's like choosing from one of your children. <laughs> like, which one is your favorite? <laughs> I know. <laughs> And you're like, oh my god, I know which one is my favorite, but how do I tell them? <laughs> <laughs> Well, so, I'm not sure if your songs have feelings, <laughs> but yeah, try not to hurt them too um. much. I, I, so I have this um, problem where sometimes I can only remember the titles of the songs that um, that we used whilst writing for them, because we, we wrote the titles mm -hmm. afterwards. But um, and one of the songs is like the the little beginning section that just was like there is a strawberry east um no, there is a strawberry field east of our That's childhood one. house and yeah. um, i really like that because i think it's maybe my favorite because i don't know anyone who lives near a strawberry field <laughs> <laughs> i just was like I, i just felt like it kind of came in a weird little dream and i'm like okay well who lives near a strawberry field i need to find them one and two It kind of just came just because mm -hmm. it worked really nicely with that rhythm, so I, it holds a nice place in my heart because it's like, cool, strawberry. I, I wonder, wonder who lives the east of a strawberry field oh, and um, <laughs> really will relate to this, who is really not the one that I am. Mm. Um, mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, to be honest, like, it's, I think each of the songs have some sort of moment that I like enjoyed the most of like out of the like whilst making them but the the first thing like instantly that popped in my mind when when you asked this question was uh in one pixel on the screen there's like <laughs> this one moment like when uh so yeah so it's like a kind of a break and then a guitar, kind of guitar comes in and it's like a vocal kind of whispery and then it's like a bit of a break and guitar, i think it's like that section for me like when When we made it, I was a bit like, "Ooh, so nice!" <laughs> and then, <laughs> and then, yeah, it's just, yeah. just like my happy memory in life as well. Just sort of like that section of the song, just being like that, just that 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 vo like vocals whispering, a bit of a tiny break, and like the guitar kicks in, and it just sort of, uh, I'm very proud for 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 that for that particular part. Uh, mm -hmm. But to be honest, like the whole album. I'm I'm quite proud of how how far we've come with like the the techniques of like the production techniques and the the way we write songs and then the way like the the the, the lyrics and then how everything sounds and then how like, I don't know like the this is the first I think I'll, like not first album but like sort of the first group of the songs that actually felt more positive than negative so for 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 us it's a big deal i think Mary. Mm -hmm. we tried mm -hmm. to do that and then that in the beginning deal. we failed because we were like we will do this like very positive music now and then we 
the first like few songs we were was like <laughs> as like it was like oh they are quite nice but they are so depressing <laughs> this is not a positive vibe to start with yeah. um so <laughs> i think yeah it was very kind of out of our comfort zone to actually do something not dress not dreadful with mm-hmm. them, but like not sad in the uh and, and cuz there was mm-hmm. like with, mm-hmm. and then one of the reasons why we decided to do it cuz we're like when we wrote the chaos album it was we had a difficulty to get it on radios cuz they were like we like this but it's too sad to play on the radio <laughs> and we were like okay oh well uh, <laughs> so they're like okay we have to make more more positive music now cuz Because we can't get any radio plays. <laughs> so, yeah. No, exactly. I think you can only write little songs like that once people already know you, so you can get it into the scenes of like of TV shows and films when the bad things <laughs> are happening. But for that, you already have to have a name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Maybe someday. Yeah. Maybe uh, someday. So yeah. Uh, so that, that I went way over the question, but yeah. So yeah, for me that was mm. from one person on the screen. Uh, That was a bit. So yeah, the first and the last. That song. section was a really good one from you, so. Mm-hmm. And maybe just the last question um, for the audience: Are you working on anything right now, and are you planning like to release a third album? So while I'm in Australia, we decided that we're gonna just take uh, a little bit of because it's it just this is actually maybe too far of a distance. to reach even but I'd really like to mm-hmm. start working on something again because I'm already feeling a little bit like itchy <laughs> like it's only been a few months of not doing any work with Gwada and I'm like I'm missing it a lot <laughs> so um yeah and I, I think the, the creative work as well it's kind of like it's quite nice when it comes in waves so we yeah we don't have anything planned at the moment uh so this year we'll probably mm-hmm. maybe at the end of the year will be a song or something i don't know uh but i think what because now is a lot of pressure like i think the, like these like when when the, with the internet and everything it's quite a lot of pressure of like putting new stuff out constantly and being like just kind of just being sort of like a machine just like producing content producing music producing and putting everything out and i think and it's quite a lot of pressure to feel quite often but at the same time I think we mm-hmm. realize that we have to like because otherwise we will burn out instantly. So we kind of do something, and then it's kind of we 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 have to like recharge, relax, and then just decide what we actually want to do. And uh, it's like music mm-hmm. is like we said, well, it's like a friendship. So we just sort of like you have to like if you always just hang out with the friend, you probably have to like be like you know what I love you, but piss off now. <laughs> <laughs> but once you like you know once in a while it's 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 very nice and great things happen so i think it's sort of similar it's now kind of like in between yeah. space mm-hmm. where we experience new things see new things it like kind of grow individually and then we will meet again and hopefully something new will happen mm-hmm. new children will be born <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yes i think we'll, yeah. we'll be waiting for it <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so Goda and Maya, thank you for joining me today at the Stellar Sound Podcast. Um, but before we go, I also want to give you an opportunity to shout out if you have like any social media platforms or any other projects, you can quickly mention them now. Um, I think we're Mash Hangok everywhere. Like Insta, the Insta handle is Mash Hangok, M A S H A N G O K, and we're on Facebook. Yeah. But we don't post very often now because yeah. and, because we're on the little and we also have and Spotify yeah. and we also have mm-hmm. a website uh, that we built as part of our last latest uh, EP, our latest mini album, uh, where you can play with the, mm-hmm. one of the songs Glass House in real time and then sort of just become part become part of Mesh Hangok basically at meshhangok.co.uk. That's the. <laughs> yeah. I've tried it. Yeah, it's it's pretty fun. So like, if if people have time, it really it's really nice. It just like, um, you feel like you're also a bit of a part of the creation <laughs> of that you. song. Yeah. So, 
Yeah, for everyone, then remember to follow us also in the Stellar Sound Discord community or head over to Instagram for the latest Stellar updates. And yeah, thank you from me and also Mesh Hangok, Godan Maya. We want to just thank you for joining us here at the Stellar Sound Podcast. But the countdown has begun and it's time to blast off into the Stellar Sphere. Remember to empower creative musicians everywhere. And we'll meet you again at the next uh, Star Armageddon.